Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. Today we're going to be talking about Young's double slit experiment. So this was an experiment done by Thomas Young in the early 1800s, and his goal was to prove the wave nature of light. And so basically what he did is he had a sheet of paper. I don't know if it was a piece of paper or not, but that really doesn't matter. He had some object with two holes poked in it, and then he shined a light towards this sheet of paper. And if we imagine light as a series of vertical planes heading towards the double slit, what ends up happening is when it hits the first slit, it turns instead of a plane into a series of concentric circles like this. And the exact same thing happens for the other one, which I'll draw in a different color. And by the way, this is known as the diffraction of light when it changes shape like this. And basically, wherever the lines intersect with each other, this is going to be known as constructive interference. So here, 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 and all over the place where these lines intersect. And if I draw the concentric circles perfectly, which I'll just tell you I did not, but what you should end up seeing is that there's these lines of constructive interference like this. Now I'm just going to erase my circle so you can see the lines better. And so the dotted lines are where I have constructive interference. And if I were to plot this against a wall on the back that this light eventually hits, then what you would end up seeing is what's called a diffraction pattern. And I'll show you a picture of what it looks like in real life on the screen right now. But it basically looks like a bunch of bright red fringes, if you're using red light, and then dark fringes in the middle. And this basically proved that light moves in this wave-like pattern. But that's not even the important part, in my opinion. I think the most important part is all the equations. So before we discuss the equations, there are some variables you need to know. We have d, which is going to be the distance between the slits. We have length l, which is the distance to the back wall. We're going to have an angle theta here. Now technically there's a lot of thetas because you can have a lot of different dotted lines here. But theta is always measured from the center line like that. And then finally, as far as the fringes go, we assign all of them an M value, which I don't know what M stands for, but the central one in the middle is gonna be M equals zero. Then one on the outside, you get M equals one, and sometimes people will call it positive one and negative one, but it's basically the same idea. And then you have M equals two and M equals two, and you get the picture. Now, fun fact, in the middle, where we have the dark spots, these would be all the 0.5 values of m. So for instance, m equals 0.5 here, and 0.5 here, and then in between one and two is m equals 1.5 above and below, like that. And so why this is important is because a lot of times the question's gonna ask you, what's the distance from the central bright fringe to maybe the next bright fringe, and we would call that distance y1, and it's y1 because I'm going from m equals zero to m equals one. And so more generally speaking, instead of y1, I would call this ym because that's gonna work now for any value of m, always measured from the center. And so finally, here's the equations that we need to know for Young's double slit experiment. We have d times sine theta equals m lambda, where we've already talked about all of these variables, except for lambda. Lambda is gonna be the wavelength of your light. And sometimes you have to calculate that using the equation C equals lambda times F. Speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. Or solving for wavelength, you would get C divided by F. So sometimes we use that. So that's the first equation we have. Usually you'd use this one to solve for theta. The next equation we have is Y sub M, Again, the distance between slits, and that's gonna be m lambda l divided by d, or a second equation, l times tangent of theta. And both of these would work depending on what variables they give you. And then finally, the last equation we're gonna talk about, if I go back to my picture and I erase some of the clutter, if you wanna find the width of the central bright fringe at m equals zero, in other words, the width there, the equation is W equals lambda L over D. And so basically, if you ever see a question with Young's double slit experiment, 
we're probably using one of these equations to answer the question. And so now we have two questions to look at today to help us understand how to use Young's double slit experiment. So here's the first question. The first order bright fringe is three centimeters away from the central bright fringe. The slits are 0.55 millimeters apart and light with wavelength 700 nanometers is passed through the slits. What is the distance from the slits to the back wall? So first I wanna write down what I know, what variables I have and what I'm solving for. So when they say the first order bright fringe, what they're saying is M equals one. It's the first bright fringe besides the center one because the center one is always M equals zero and that's typically where we wanna measure from. So that makes sense. So since the first order fringe is three centimeters away from the central bright fringe, they're telling us what Y is, our Y distance, which is gonna be three centimeters or I prefer 0 0.03 meters. They tell us the slits are 0.55 millimeters apart. Yes, I do have to convert that to meters, but also this is D, the distance between the slits. So it's gonna be 0.55 times 10 to the minus third meters. That's how I get to meters. And then they tell me light with a wavelength 700 nanometers is used. So that's my wavelength, which is 700 times 10 to the minus ninth meters, because nano is always 10 to the minus ninth. And I believe that's everything they give me. And the only thing left is to say, what is the distance from the slits to the back wall? In other words, they want L, the distance L. So which equation am I gonna use given this information here? Well, I wanna use the equation Y sub M, or in this case, Y sub one, because M is one, equals M lambda L over D. They tell us the distance is 0 0.03 meters, we just said M is one, lambda is 700 times 10 to the minus ninth, L is what I'm solving for, and then divided by the distance between the slits, which was 0.55 times 10 to the minus three. Now there's a couple ways you can solve this. What I would do is I would multiply both sides by the denominator to get rid of the denominator here. So 0 0.03 times 0.55 times 10 to the minus third, gets me 1.65 times 10 to the minus fifth equals the right side's gonna be 700 times 10 to the minus ninth, and that's times L. And then now all I gotta do is divide both sides by 700 times 10 to the minus ninth, and that's gonna get me an answer of 23.6 meters, which is how far away the slits are to the back wall. And that's it, we're done, not so bad. And so then I just have one more question for us, very similar. So here's the second one. The distance between the slits of a double slit experiment is 20 millimeters. The diffraction pattern appears on a wall 30 meters behind the slits. If the frequency of the light is 6.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz, find the angle between the first order bright fringe and the second order dark fringe. So feel free to try this one on your own, just as a piece of advice. If I want the angle difference between the first order bright fringe and the second order dark fringe, then I'll just tell you, we need to use a certain equation twice because I have two different M values here. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which equation to use, I want you to try. So go ahead, try the problem, and when you're done, or if you get stuck, unpause the video and see how I do it. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna see what variables they give me which is the distance between the slits. So D equals 20 millimeters or 20 times 10 to the minus third. The fact that the wall is 30 meters behind the slits is telling me L equals 30. They give me the frequency of the light, which I don't appreciate, which is 6.5 times 10 to the 14th. The reason why I don't like that is because I'm gonna have to solve for wavelength, because remember wavelength equals C divided by F, where C is the speed of light three times 10 to the eighth. So in other words, this would be three times 10 to the eighth divided by the frequency, 6.5 times 10 to the 14th, and we'll get a wavelength of 4.6 times 10 to the minus seventh. So that's my wavelength. And then they want the angle difference between the first order bright fringe and the second order dark fringe. So we need to know what those M values are. Well, I'll tell you, the first order bright fringe is always gonna be M equals one. But the dark fringes are a little more complicated, so let me help you figure it out. If I were to write out the dark fringes in order, it's all the 0.5 values. So 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.
1.5, 2.5, 3.5, etc. And so if I were to name these, this 0.5 would be the first order dark fringe, 1.5 would be the second order, 2.5 would be the third order, and you get the pattern. So if they want the second order dark fringe, I want 1.5. So in other words, I'm first gonna use an equation when m equals one, and then I'm gonna solve the equation again when m equals 1.5. But which equation? And I'll tell you, there's only two equations that we could use. One is d sine theta equals m lambda, and the other is y sub m equals l tangent theta. Now the problem with the second one is I don't know the distance between the first and second order bright and dark fringes. So I would be stuck with the bottom equation, but I have everything I need for the top one. So that's what we're gonna do. D, which is 20 millimeters or 0 0.02 meters times sine theta equals M, and I'll start with M equals one first, times lambda, which we said was 4.6 times 10 to the minus seventh. So then if I wanna solve for theta here, first I divide both sides by 0 0.02, that would give me sine theta equals 2.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. And now if I want to solve for theta, I'm taking the arc sine or inverse sine of both sides. So let's see what that gets us. Theta equals 0 0.0013, and that's degrees. And now I just gotta do the same thing, the same equation, but now when m equals 1.5. So then again, I'm gonna divide 0 0.02 on both sides left side is sine theta, the right side is 3.5 times 10 to the minus fifth, and then I just have to take the inverse sine of both sides, and that would get me 0 0.00198 degrees. And so then the final answer is just 0 0.00198 minus the other angle, 0 0.0013, so 0 0.00198 minus 0 0.0013, 0 0.00016, and that's degrees, and that's my answer. Or if I used all the digits in my calculator, then it's 0 0.0006611 degrees, which is also correct. And now there's one more thing I wanna show you before I let you go, and that is there's another way of solving this, but this way isn't the best answer because it's an approximation. But if you wanna use this equation just once instead of twice, then what you can do is you can assign this value of m instead of doing it twice, you can just call this m 1.5 minus one. In other words, the two m values subtracted from each other. And this is not gonna be a perfect answer, but it's gonna be really close. So if I do it this way, 0 0.02 sine theta equals 0.5 times the wavelength. Again, dividing by 0 0.02 would get me 1.15 times 10 to the minus fifth. And then taking the inverse sine of that, and we will get 0 0.0006611 degrees, which if I compare it to the answer above, actually is the exact same answer this time. But if you were to keep going more decimal places, you would see that it is like barely off. So in other words, if you were to do this strategy, I think you'll get the right answer like every time. But technically speaking, it is an approximation. So take it with a grain of salt. And that's all the questions I have today on Young's double slit experiment. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.